Good day, welcome back. Justlovingpeople.com is the website. And today we're broadcasting from a clothing store. Can you believe this? This program is so live as can be. To give you the feel of what it is to be a missionary on the field here in South Korea. And today on the show I've got my lovely wife Michelle. Michelle, welcome back. Thank you so much. So what are we doing in a clothing store? Looking for winter's clothes. Why? We found this clothing store that's really good price. So, yeah, now we just need to find my size because that's the thing. Korean people are really small built. And only a few people or few shops started importing bigger sizes for all the foreigners that comes to say in the country. So, once you find a shop like that you go as frequently as possible to see if they have your size. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, so we are clothing shopping today. As we said yesterday, the seasons are changing and our season here in South Korea just changed drastically. This morning when we woke up, it was cold. It was really, really cold. So yeah, I think while my wife show up, um, let me tell you what we did yesterday. That looks nice. I like this. It's white with black stripes. Yeah, but it looks comfortable. I'm all about comfort these days. That's cool. Yeah, it's nice if you think, you know, seasons change in the weather. But seasons also change with the Lord and with people. Is there a scripture that talks about seasons? Is it what? Is there a scripture that talks about seasons? Oh, there are plenty of scriptures. And Jesus spoke a lot about seasons. And he told his disciples, go and harvest where the previous people planted seed. So even then, there were people before them that planted seeds of the good news. And then... Jesus' disciples got the message, go and harvest where the previous people planted seed. So that just means when you are at a place and you need to plant seeds, plant the seeds. But it doesn't necessarily say mean that you are the one that's going to sow, you know, going to harvest them. Sometimes you need to sow and the next generation comes and get the harvest. That's why the body of Christ is so important. Sometimes you will harvest with previous generations planted seed. And then if you look at us, we are planting seeds, but you never know who the next generation is going to be. And they are going to get the harvest of those seeds. It's all a cycle. People need to learn that. That's an awesome example, you know, planting seed is not always the nicest of times. It's hard work, it's dusty, it is, but we all love the time to reap, okay? <laughs> but, you know, I had, you know, I had seasons in my life where, where I just planted without any harvest and then suddenly you just walk into, into, into the time where you just harvest. Well, my wife is uh, looking for clothes here, and I will keep you posted as we find stuff. So uh, we will we will be right back. So we just finished shopping, and uh, what? Yeah, we got you some nice stuff. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm I'm a bit overwhelmed at this moment. Um, got just applied once again. Um, <laughs> so many pretty winter's dresses, you know, which is so versatile. You can wear it in winter or summer. And our God just provided <laughs> for extra, extra discount on the clothes. <laughs> so, thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. You know, um, I was thinking about, you say, we're talking about seasons seasons that are changing and in human terms uh, when seasons change you know our clothes change and I think in the spirit it can be the same like you know 
my season last year. My season last year and the five years before that was um, totally something different. You know, I lived in this mud house and I had my way of doing things. And suddenly this year, everything changed. You know, my clothes changed, meaning my apartment. Suddenly I needed a car. Suddenly I needed... Uh, because the people that we're working with here in Sejong, they are upper class people. So they, I don't think they will fit into my mud house. But in Sangju, I was living in a mud house and that worked perfectly for the people that I was working with. So it is amazing to see how seasons change and the Lord provide like new clothes. He can provide new houses and new friends. And I think the secret is just we need to be ready to um, be flexible. Yes, we need to be ready to adapt into our new season. You know, like you said, seasons in the spirit. Um, in winter, you need extra more layers of clothes than any other season. So I believe in your winter season that you are layered with so many clothes to protect you and to get you through that hibernation season, you know, to make sure that you are protected on all sides and you have everything that you need. You're not lacking anything. You have more than enough. God knows what you need before you even know what you're going to need and pro God provides even before you ask. And so it is just a beautiful thing to think about. In your spring season, it's all floral and fragrance. And, you know, it's beautiful. It's a happy season. It's, it's really, I remember our spring season we had here in South Korea with all the cherry blossoms and the cherry blossom festivals. And everywhere you go, it's so much life and energy, you know, all the beauty with the flowers and the blossoms and... So that for us as human beings in our spiritual realm, it's a beautiful thing. Seasons are so beautiful. You just need to embrace it. And people aren't going to be in your life forever. God is. And it matters what God wants you to do. It doesn't matter what people want you to do. People are people, but God is a living God, and God is, in my opinion, the only person, the only God, the only importance in your life that matters. And it was yesterday when I told somebody, just as Paul said, I'm not here to please people. I'm here to please God and I'm here to do what God wants me to do. I'm not here to do what people want me to do and that is really important and I'm, I'm really firm on that. I, you can even hear my voice tone that I take that very seriously. I don't play with it. I don't take it for granted. I appreciate that. And I believe it is supposed to be every person's goal to be the way Jesus was on earth. To love one another. To do good to people. To do the will of our Father. And... I don't care if that sounds spiritual to people. It is spiritual. It's all about a spiritual God. You know, God is spirit. He is in our spirits. So I don't understand people's arguments when I tell me, oh, you're being so spiritual. I'm not so spiritual. Well, get so spiritual. Still be a human being and don't be overly spiritual that you can't connect with people you still need to be human the way Jesus was Jesus was human but he was doing God's will you know he was perfect and I believe that 
that's how everybody should aim to be. And when everybody has that aim in eyesight to be like that, it's going to be a magnificent world. And the devil is just going to shiver in his lonely cave, wherever he is. And that's, that's beautiful if you think about it. What you said about <laughs> Jesus, I just remembered, I was just thinking about the, the two loaves, the, uh, the five bread and the two fish, you know. That wasn't a spiritual need. You know, Jesus met the people's physical need. So uh, we talk about being spiritual, not too spiritual. Yeah, Jesus did a lot of spiritual stuff. He healed the sick. He caused other devils. Most of those things were spiritual. But then you have Jesus seeing that the people were hungry. And he took, as we know, the two fish and the five loaves of bread. And he fed uh, 12 well, almost 20,000 people with that. And then the other dad had to pay tax. So he sent, he sent his disciple to catch a fish. And there was a coin. So, yeah, this thing. I've also heard those people say, we are not religious. My family is not religious. Man, it's not about being religious or spiritual or all these things. It's life. Yeah, you know, religious it's is one thing. God is not religious. Religious is another thing. I'm talking about being in the spirit, doing what God wants you to do. See in the spirit. Don't see people in the flesh. See people in the spirit. Once you see in the spirit, you can see which people has a clean canvas that is pure before God. And you can see those that need to get to know God who has to repent things, who has to get rid of bad stuff in their lives. That's what I mean with being spiritual, is being... I don't know if this comes across right, but I hope it does. You need to see in spirit, to see people the way God sees them. That's how you love unconditionally. Once you look at people with your fleshly eyes, you're in trouble. When you listen, listen with your spiritual ears. Don't listen with your fleshly ears. When you speak to people as God to guide the conversation, because that way you say what God wants to say to that person. He uses you as a vessel to do that. And being religious, religious takes you apart from God because God is not religious and people should get to know the difference religion is not from God being in relationship with God that is from God Hello. <laughs> the school boy is greeting us well that was very important in our relationship Religion is one thing, relationship is another. We're out of time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we just want to thank our partners for making this possible. Thank you for joining us for this shopping spread that we've just been on, talking about seasons that are changing. And I just want to summarize if your seasons are changing, embrace. There's nothing better than just to embrace. Thank you for talking to us again, Michelle. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, it's always good to have you. Now, please go to justlovingpeople.com. That's the website where you can watch our latest movie um, called Soul. We also put up one about a Korean traditional wedding, photos, everything. You can also partner with us there. And please support the radio station that you're listening to. These guys makes it possible for us to talk to you. And we want you to support them also. So we will be back tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.